Hi there, and welcome to today's class. So let's look at yet another question on factorial. All right, let's try to simplify another question on factorial um, concepts. Now, for this one here, we are asked to evaluate um, this question and this. So how do we solve this? Now, there's a simple trick to solving problems like this, right? And the simple trick is this. Always express the bigger factorial in terms of the smaller factorial. That's like the idea in solving questions of this nature, okay? Always express the bigger factorial in terms of the smaller factorial. Now, in our previous class, we discussed that 10 factorial can be expressed as um, a factorial lower than this, such that we can say 10 factorial is sitting as me saying 10 times 9 factorial, or perhaps 10 factorial can be written as 10 times 9 times 8 factorial as, uh, okay, one more. We can still say 10 factorial is equal to 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. So depending on how you want to express it, you can express a bigger factorial in terms of a smaller factorial as we discussed in the last class. Now if I'm to solve this, what exactly do I do? For these two here, your first task would be identify which of them is the greater number, right? If I have x factorial and then x plus 1 factorial, which of them is the greater number? Now, the, the answer will be very simple. Of course, if I have 6 and I have this same 6 plus 1, this is 7. Obviously, 7 is bigger than 6. In the essence, if I have a number plus 1, this number here would always be bigger than the original. In essence, this is x, this is x plus 1. So hence, the denominator is bigger than the numerator. All right, so with this concept achieved, let us try to solve this question. All right, so we have this. So we have this as x factorial all over x plus 1 factorial. So we said for this, the bigger, the bigger term is denominator. So I express the denominator in terms of the numerator. So hence, if I have x plus 1 factorial, let's express this one here in terms of x factorial. What will it be? This will be equal to, we said for factorial, each of the terms, I will subtract 1. So my first term here will be equal to x plus 1 multiplying this same term here x plus 1. We said subtract 1. It becomes minus 1 factorial. If I work on this, this is equal to x plus 1 into, this becomes x into 1 minus 1 is 0. So I'm left with x factorial. Hence, we are saying that x plus 1 factorial is same thing as me saying x plus 1 into x factorial, right? These two are the same thing. So we have this. All right, so with this one taken here, we can now come here. So with this, you can see that I have now expressed the denominator in terms of numerator. So this now becomes x factorial all over this one here, as we've expressed here, means x plus 1 multiplying x factorial. So we have this. So with this, now we can see that this will cancel this. I have 1. Hence, this is now equal to 1 all over x plus 1. And that becomes the answer to this question. So basically, this is how we solve these kind of questions. All right? We've said that the simple idea is express the bigger factorial in terms of the smaller factorial such that they cancel out and then you simplify. So I'm having this as my answer. So here's the B part here. Between the numerator and denominator, which do you think is bigger? All right? Is it m minus 1 or m plus 2? Now, I'll give you a hint. Assume m to be literally any number. Let's take m to be 5. So, if m is equal to 5, it means that m minus 1 becomes 5 minus 1 all over m plus 2 becomes 5 plus 2. And that's equal to 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 plus 2 is 7. So, it's clear that the denominator is greater than the numerator. So your task is to subtract this until we get the numerator. If I subtract this, this should give you m plus 2. 
Then the next one becomes m plus 2 minus 1, which would be m plus 1. Then subtract again becomes m plus 1 minus 1, which would be m, right? And then you now have, so you can subtract up to what this point before solving, all right? So try to get this and leave your answer in the comment section, and I'll tell you if you're correct, all right? So try to get this one on your own and leave your answer in the comment section, all right? If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and leave a comment, all right? For the comment, leave the answer or the solution to this question in the comment section, and I'll tell you if you're correct. Thank you, and see you in the next class.